Hey everybody, welcome to Woodworking Wisdom. My name's Colwyn Way and well, I'm back. I'm back in the UK after coming back from the US yesterday. I arrived at dinner time yesterday um, and then straight into um, work this morning. So we've got uh, purposely, I did think about this. I thought, well, I won't have much planning time. So we've got a nice, simple project to set myself back in um, and hopefully to um, to give you something nice as uh, in our run up. I'm going to say the C word again, Ben, and then run up to Christmas because you know what it's like as makers. We have to start making to put into the shops and start selling ready for those Christmas presents. So um, as you just heard, we've got Ben on the cameras and all the switching and all the techery and all that sort of thing. Um, but I think before we start, it's only right. I want to just um, show you a few pictures of my past two weeks, where I've been, what I've been doing and things like that. And if you were watching last week, you would have seen a very frantic, well, you wouldn't have seen anything, actually. You wouldn't have seen a frantic anything. You would have um, seen a picture of uh, myself and a few of the lads in the US. Um, but it was behind the scenes uh, frantic because I, I gave them that picture about 10 minutes before they were due to go live on Jason's uh, stream last week. So, Ben, could you just put the first picture up? I think this is probably one at, uh, at Nick Agar Studios, um, I'm pretty sure. So yes, this, 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 it's okay. So I done my first class at uh, Nick's place and um, I had five students on that, on that class. And on the class was Jim, or one of the students was Jim. And he had watched our, um, our video on making these cool spinning tops and, and decided to give it a, a go himself in a Spanish sort of Mexican way. Um, and adding all those colors and textures, I thought that was only right to show you a, a picture of, of what he'd achieve after watching one of the videos. By the way, we're, I'm going to um, talk about a couple of videos that we've done previously, and the link to these videos are, are going to be below the descriptions of this uh, this stream today. I thought they were really colorful, really, really cool. So the next one, and the next one was Mike. Mike was, um, there's Mike. Um, he uh, made a load of the flowers. Now, he told me this story that he lives on a small island near Savannah. And uh, he was very popular because he'd make these and give them away um, to all of his friends on the island. So I like these flowers because, again, he, he, he'd seen one of the streams that we'd done well, was a couple of years ago now. Um, but the colors that he used were really cool. You can see those sort of pearlescent colors. Um, loads and loads of work there. And he was giving them away to the ladies on the course. So a bit of a charm. That was old Mike. Um, so let me just mention the names of the people on that course. So we had a Tommy. We had a Mike. Uh, Barbara, Cynthia, and, uh, and Jim. That was my first one. There they all are with their creations. I love Robbie the Robot in the in the front there. But a mixture of Vikings and uh, um, who do we have? It, that wasn't Santa Claus. That was a le well, will have been a leprechaun. And I, unfortunately, I do have the picture, but I haven't uploaded it in time to show you. But very, really, really cool class. And the next one, if you were watching Jason's last week, you would have seen um, this this group of lads. So this is a, a group of veterans and uh, some steely hard um, men there was some fantastic stories, a mixture of Marines, Army and Navy um, and field medics. So you got some uh, real interesting characters there. We had an absolute blast. Six people on that course. And um, again, they come away. Most of them had made a, a smoker before, a German smoker before, and previous course that I'd done at Aramont, but uh, there's some new guys there. So you're, well, you won't, may, you may not recognize the chap in front, but he's a regular to woodworking with, and that's Bob P. Bob P from Virginia. We've got a Frank Travis as well. Uh, we've got a Frank Jessup. There's a George. And um, just looking at my notes, we've got Ronnie right at the back there. Um, and we've got Mike, Mike. So no, a really, really cool course. Loved it. And of course, both those courses were at some um, Nick Agar studios. Um, absolute fantastic place to go and teach. Um, but more importantly to go and learn a real, um, it's a real ambience to that place and real character to it. A really interesting place to be two workshops. You've got the turning workshop, then you've got the embellishing workshop as well, all connected together in a wonderful small town called Brooklyn, Love, right? Sleepy little town. If you are thinking about a course and you're in the States or want to go over to the States, look up Nick Agar Studios. There's more courses being added in the next few weeks um, as a victim of its own success because it's such a popular place to go and learn. Um, uh, the courses are going very, very quickly, so I would get in as soon as you can. There may be not be dates at the moment, but like I said, within the next um, few weeks, they're, they're putting a lot more dates in ready for, the, for, for next year as well. So have a look at that. That's Nick Agar Studios. 
Okay, the next one, Ben, what have we got next? Oh, this is great. So I literally walked into um, SWAT, so down in Waco in Texas. I had been there probably about 15 minutes. I walked in the main room, and, um, and Neil and Chris come to see me. This is Neil and Chris, uh, Chris Nicholson. Um, and just blindsided me with a question, does your wife have, have pierced ears? <laughs> to which I answered yes. She said, I've made these um, earrings for them, and I've got two sets of lovely earrings um, from them. And um, if you're listening, uh, Neil and Chris, um, Vicky loves them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And the next one, who we had. Now, this is a regular. You'll know exactly who this is, I'm sure, if you've ever seen him before. It's Hodgepodge. So one of the main names um, on and regular on Woodworking Wisdom. So he bumped into me just before I went on and, and started my uh, German smoker demonstration there at, uh, at Waco at SWAT. Uh, in Texas. <clears throat> so it was a real nice thing to suddenly, we were talking to start with and I didn't know who it was. And they said, it's, I'm hodgepodge. And immediately, it's funny how these YouTube names um, come before the real name. So hi, mate. Hope uh, hope you had a lovely swap and um, and that you're watching now. And that's it. That's that's my, that's my pictures um, of my last couple of weeks. Obviously, there's a lot of other things that happened, but I couldn't show you all of those pictures. Um far too far too many to show so this is the project for today is there any chat on there is bob p in the house i haven't uh, i didn't see yeah bob p's in he's in he's is he in. <laughs> yeah i'm just catching up with the chat now okay hello mate all right good to see you um and thanks for looking after me last week and thanks to all the guys at swat as well um where there, there's so many people but tom bt and, and henry Pennell in particular those are the guys that really really helped me uh, last week um, I really enjoyed the seminar of the show. It was fantastic. I enjoyed the town um, and and everybody that was there. It was really cool. I I couldn't have wanted for a better a better weekend. So thank you. Right, let's get on to some turning. That's really why you're tuning in. I guess I guess we're going to look at these tea light holders. Now I've done a few candlesticks in the past. We've done tea light holders in the past. But I want to do something a little bit different. It's something that I've had in mind before. Well, this design I've seen this design in several places, um, either on Pinterest. Um, I'm just Googling uh, candlesticks and things like that for things to do. And it's a very, very simple shape, a simple design, simple to make as well. So I'm thinking about all you beginners that are in the house um, watching today. It's a lovely thing to do. Um, we're going to reverse this round as well as do a little bit of drilling on the lathe. It gives you lots of options to color, to decorate, um, or to keep plain if you've got a really nice piece of timber. So a very, very simple design. I believe in, in, in odds. So the power of three and all that all go to, to five um, or seven. It, odd numbers just to me look quite nice. I know candlesticks, you can have a, a, a pair of candlesticks either side of the mantle. But when you've got one group like that, I just believe they look, they look quite nice, altering the heights and, and so on. So there, that's a, a set of beach candlesticks. I want to do two for you. I've got um, um, a couple of ideas. So I'm going to do just a, a single oak one um, here and leave that as a a polished piece and then i've got a piece of just softwood here that i'm going to um, sand but then do a little bit of airbrushing just to start your um your uh, creative uh, thoughts flowing um with a little bit of color there's only one color and it's a uh, uh, it's not an, a um it's not a primary color so we're just going to do a very subtle bit of airbrushing on there yes ben question um so not a question but we got ronnie in um, ronnie says, ronnie was on nick uh, Nick and Colwyn's class. Yeah, it's nice on the second picture. photo. And he said to tell you that his smoker works. Hey, there you go. You see, <laughs> there we are. Ronnie is an ex-marine, part of that that group of veterans that I was lucky enough to teach. Is really interesting when you've got a group of of uh, people like, like like that that have actually been somewhere and done something. You know, there's a story a minute. I'm not quite sure how many of them were true, but there's a good story every every minute okay it's just i'm literally just centering up here so just a little brattle mark in each end i'm going to use the pro drive the large the large pro drive um and a tailstock center this the particular tailstock center i have is the ring center Okay, just check corners, make sure nothing's about to touch the tool rest when we turn it on. I'll start off with a roughing gouge, and I'm going to prep, excuse me, itchy nose, I'm going to prep both of these up, 
um, for the chuck. So I'm going to round them down to a cylinder, create a little, um, a little tenon uh, for the bottom. I'm going to hold it in the chuck, do most of the shaping, um, clean up the top edge, drill the hole, then we'll flip it, clean at the bottom, and it'll be done. So nice, quick project, nice, simple way of working. And if you're into selling stuff for craft shows, for craft fairs, um, things like that, then these are an easy one to make. You know, they don't take a huge amount um, of making, really. So lay speed to zero, turn the lathe on, then turn the lathe up. And uh, this first one, it's around about, well, the stock is three inches, the 75 mil, and it's around about six inches long, okay? It's about 150. Let's get rid of the watch just for the minute. This gets in the way. Um, and we'll rough down. So rough that onto a cylinder or, or near cylinder is fine at this point. Ben, sorry, would you do me a favor and just grab me a set of the little ear buddy protectors? My sensitive ears at the moment are picking up a little bit too much of that noise. Thank you, mate. Cheers. I said it before, you know, we always worry about um, our lungs, our eyes and, and all those things, but we, we forget quite a lot of the time about our ears. Um, mine start to remind me now because... Uh, Little noises creep into them at the end of the day when I'm supposedly all peaceful and um, I get a little bit of tinnitus back. Um, so, yeah, just a little bit of care. I know I'm not wearing a dust mask. That's for an obvious reason. I'm trying to talk to you guys when I'm not um, demonstrating. I've got a full face visor blowing nice fresh air down at me. So just, just, just to let you be aware that I'm not without a mask much of the time. So we're going to use a set of C jaws just to grip that. I've got my nice little Clubman chuck here, or the SK100. I'm just going to measure the, the internal. So grab a set of calipers. There we go. Now, that'll do us. I'm not going to go overly deep. We don't need to go deep because we're going to use the tail stock as well. So first blank. Now we'll go for the softwood blank as well. Making sure nothing's touching. Everything's firm. Lay speed to zero. Turn the lathe on. Turn the lathe up. Uh, a little tenon. So both ready for the chuck now, so we can move things around on the lathe a little. So first job, I'm going to drill the holes. Oh, sorry. Second job is to fit, drill the holes. I'm just going to clean that surface up first. So I know exactly where, or I know exactly what depth to do these. So let's go for a little quarter inch. Quarter inch bowl gouge or three eighths if you're in the States. Yeah, 
right, let's have a double check. Are we clean? Yeah, we're clean. So now, whilst we've got that on there, I'm going to go for my drill chuck. And we're using a 42 mil um, forcing of it here. Or wave, in this case, it's a wave cutter. It's not going overly deep, so I'm not worried that it's not a sawtooth. Just take that out for the minute. Now, the cups we're using, so we sell those here at Axminster. I've got the um, the short the um, links um, below the text. So I just need to go a little bit deeper than the bottom of this drill. So I'm actually going to go to the bottom of the darkened bit on this uh, this drill bit here. Yes, Ben, we've got a question. Um, just to say uh, that Frank Travis is in as well from hey. your class. So you got all the guys. Oh, excellent. Um, and a question here from the gentleman Wood Turner. Um, he says he's got, uh, sorry, he's got to cut some five inch skittle balls in oak. Yes. Um, would you cut them by hand or use a sphere jig for consistency? I'd cut them by hand. Personally, I would cut them always, uh, Mark, by hand. Um, yeah, so do your tenons. So rough down to your final um, size. So rough down to send the final size with a nice clean cut. And then whatever the diameter you have there, mark with dividers um, each side and then cut down with your parting tool. So you have same uh, length to diameter and then you can start your rounding process. And you know what you're doing. Round over is almost to your cylinder, then move 90 degrees um, between two cup centers and then uh, follow the ghosting. And then just keep moving it every, uh, you know, a, a, an inch or so at a time until you get it spot on. And you'll find that um, it won't it won't take too long. I tend to cheat after a while. I go away from the gouge once I've um, rounded the first rounding over. So once I start moving it, it incrementally, I'll then go over to like a, a large skew on its side and just scrape gently. And you'll find that that, that works perfectly. And um, Jim B's asking, Jim B's asking about, um, he said, uh, what is a good wood to make a trophy base from and the best way to finish it? Um, trophy bases, what, well, really whatever color timber you want, so any timber will do, but most of them you see are, are fairly dark. So I've used a lot of Sapili for tro trophy bases before. It's that sort of mahogany look. Now, if you want to keep it the same color, just sanding, seal it, and then wax it. Um, or you can lacquer them if you want a slightly harder wearing finish. Um, I've used um, a product called Stainex before as well, which uh, just just Google that. Um, it's uh, like ammonia type of uh, finish. So you um, you paint it on, wait for it to go um, hard, and then burnish it off, and you get an aged uh, Victorian um, mahogany look on that. Well, you can get several shades, but that's what I was using. Um, so, yeah, those are good options. Um, and then once you've done that, you can lacquer over the top. So Stainex in itself is a, a is a finish. Um, and so that looks lovely anyway. But, yeah, anything like that. All right. All right for the minute, Ben. So we're going to go down to that, that depth that I said about. There we are. That will do us. Let me just stop that, double check to make sure our little cup goes all the way down. Yep, that's fitting down there nicely. So what we can do now, I'm going to use my O'Donnell jaws so I don't have to do this shape just yet. What I will do, though, is just give this outside face here just a bit of a sanding because I'm not going to be able to get to that as easy um, when I turn the piece over. So if I go for, um, let's start with a 150 on that. I don't think we need to go any finer. 150 or 240 there. Just a 400, I think. Might be different on the outside edge. So, dust it. Go on now. So, just a little bit of sanding. Two forty. Four hundred. There we are again. Let's talk. I know we're not doing big numbers, but let's talk production. We do the same thing on the other other one now, rather than 
mess around. So that one's done now to that, that point. That's nice and smooth and ready to go. So a bit of oak. Again, same thing. We'll just tidy up the outside face and then drill before cleaning. Lovely bit of oak, this one. This is one of our, our wood blanks that we sell on the on our website. So generally three by threes for 12. Should be deep enough again, but we'll double check before we take the drill bit out. Yep, deep enough. That can go to one side. Then don't forget, once you've done that, the drill bits will be hot, so don't touch the business end. That can go to one side. Yes, Ben, have another question. A question here from Roger Kent. He's asking, what grit CBN wheels would you recommend for sharpening gouges? Uh, for sharpening, I would probably go to 180. Um, and for grinding, probably around about an 80 to 120 between those two works quite well but yeah sharpening about 180 will give you a really really fine sharpen and, and it was, it's still quite quick as well ben and that the um could you just remind us the, the name of the um stain is it stain x stain x yes stain x is that spelt just like stain with an x on the end ex on the end yes yeah yeah so stain cool. x great Thanks. all right it's a london from memory a london based company and they do a whole range of um of finishes um and the stain x is one of them all right so yeah have a look if that's no joy um let ben know on the chat if someone's searching now or if you or if you do it afterwards come through um on our email um and i'll do the research and um and get back to you with that one all right right a little bit of sanding In terms of jaws that we can hold this with next, pretty much anything, they'll all go down to the diameter that you've just um, drilled. Now, most of the most of the candle cups for tea light holders that I know of anyway are about 42 mil, usually by about 17 deep as well. There we are. So we've got that nice, nice finished top. Um, we can proper put put a proper finish on that in a moment but that's nice and clean and ready so all i'm going to do i would swap jaws or swap chucks so i'm just going to go to my other 100 mil chuck and we're going to add a set of o'donnell jaws oh these o'donnell jaws have gone down so well in the states um the last couple of weeks i think they're well i know they are completely unique to the axminster range but this set is the one is the um, od1 so one inch internal I've been using the OD112s, one a slightly bigger version, um, the past couple of weeks, and they've, they've gone down really, really well, like I say, really nice to use. I'm actually using the parallel um, face here to hold this, this blank. Let's get the right chuck key. There we are. With that. We've got a, a center point on there, so if I put my tailstock center back in, We've got a perfect hole point. And of course, once that's held in there accurately, I'll tighten it up properly. Um, and then we've got something to later on to clean up the underside. It'll be held in there um, nice and strong. So we've got a good hole point. Tool rest can come over. Let's make sure that chuck is done up properly. So it's really gripping. There we go. Now I can start thinking about a shape. So this is the easy bit. We know what we're going to do shape-wise. Well, I know what I'm going to do shape-wise anyway. You can. You don't have to stick with what I'm doing here, of course. This is quite a traditional shape. I've seen these quite a lot recently. You can come up with your own shape. Do whatever you want. It's up to you. 
Oh, there we are. Let's turn the lay speed up, up to about 1600. So once I'm down to a full cylinder, I'm actually just going to change my tool rest for a slightly shorter version. So there we are. Give me a little bit more stability then. So I'm making sure that I'm down to a full cylinder, then I can start the shaping. So roughing gouge goes to one side. Let's go to a bowl gouge. Top of the candlesticks, the chuck end, if you were wondering. So just using a shear cut then. One more. I think we're nearly there. So up with the tool rest. Scrub my skew. Right the way over. Same thing on this side. I think we're small enough there. Right, and a little bit of sanding. Everything can stay where it is. This is going to come away in a moment. We'll take that away. Um, in fact, we can do that now. Let's just turn the lathe down a little bit. Turn the lathe off. Remove the tail stock. There we go. Now I'll just remove that base. We all good. Oh, sorry, Ben, I didn't see. Yes, questions. Yes, we've got a couple of questions in, Colwyn. Um, first one from Woodwork Learner. Would pen jaws and tail stock be enough to hold it? Um, you, pen, actually, no, yes, pen jaws would if they open up. Um, so for, if they close down to 42 mil, let me just double check for you a minute. Uh, so I've been away for two weeks and everything's gone missing. Ben, can you <laughs> grab me a rule, please? <laughs> um, I don't see why not. There, I hesitated just for a minute because pen jaws, I was thinking pin jaws. Okay, so pen jaws are different. Pen jaws are substantial. They have a lot of metal there. If you're going to use pin jaws, then I would have said no, because you'd only be gripping on that last sort of 17 to 20 mil, and it puts too much stress on them. They need to be used in their full length. But mystery hand, thank you. Um, the closed minimum for the pen jaws, no, a bit too big, a 45 so no unfortunately not they're a bit too large of course if you're using 45 mil bit it'll be a little bit sloppy for the um the candle cups i'm using but if you found bigger ones then fine yes ben another one um so this one's from uh dj he's asking um it turned the first christmas tree last night with a skew only um left and right handed but he found some limitations with the skew I used your skew at the AWGB seminar, and I liked it. Um, do accidents to sell? Of course they do. Yeah, absolutely. You go into your nearest store, go on the website, you'll see all three sizes there available. Absolutely. All right, all good? Yep. Well done. I'm so pleased everybody's getting into the uh, festive mood. Uh, it's nearly the end of August. <laughs> So 
So just cleaning off the, the excess. And if you want to put a little bit of embellishment on the bottom, you can. You've got good access, but look, I'm purposely not taking a massive cut. Because I'm holding on a parallel jaw. And I'm a fair way from the headstock as well. Listen to the lathe. You hear that vibration coming. I'm just listening. Right, let's just stop and check to make sure I got all rid of all nasties. And we have, that looks fine. It's nice. So now I've got free reign. I can sand everything and that will pretty much, apart from the finishing, be a finish of that one. So lay speed is good. Dust extraction on. And we're going to start again, 150 to 400. But I'm going to add in the 100 as well. Lay speed up just a little bit more. One fifty. Just zipping through this. There we are, 240. That was the wrong 150. Finally, 400. That's fine. Just check for any nasties. And I'm going to put a bit of sanding sealer on this one. So sanding, I'm, I've just chosen to do sanding sealer on wax. But you can sanding seal and, and lacquer. If you want to. There we are. There's a couple of comments here, Cohen, that the shape's reminding them of an angel. Well, of course. <laughs> Christmas, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to mute that, apparently, when you say it. Just quickly <laughs> dip the mic off. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Is it... Uh, are we getting some... Um... <laughs> What do they say? Um, come back, crash back, <laughs> anti, anti, anti Christmas. Anti Christmas in the middle of summer. Ugh, come on. <laughs> Christmas is not just for winter. There we go. I just say let that dry a little bit and you'll know it's drying when you start to smell it and you get that vapour in the air as it caught my breath. 
This is a cellulose sanding sealer, hence the reason it's catching my breath. Um, a little bit of a light sanding back before waxing, or apply your wax with a bit of web. Yeah, apply your wax with a bit of web, web racks. Web racks. Um, I suspect, knowing who's used this last. Oh no, there isn't. I was going to say, I suspect there might be a little bit of web racks in there. As long as you're web racking and not wire wooling, do not wire wool with wax, especially on oak. You'll get lovely black speckles dotted up and down it. Um, tannins and tannic acid. Um, love wire wool or steel wool. There we are. So now we can put the wax on. Doesn't matter really what wax you put on. This is a um, uh, uh, just a, a regular general duty wax. This is the clear, um, but you can go microcrystalline, you can go um, other makes, makes no odds. Not a lot of difference I found, and all the manufacturers of waxes are going to shoot me now for saying that. They're all pretty good. Yes, Ben. I've got a question here from John. Colwyn, he's asking, um, well, it sounds like he's got himself a new sharpening setup with the, a slow grinder and CMB, uh, CMB wheel. CBN. <clears throat> CBN, that's the one. That's the one. I knew you. the one you meant. <laughs> <laughs> um, so John's asking, are ki kitchen knives uh, made of steel, um, is it too soft to sharpen on the CBN wheel, and would it clog the wheel? You mean um, carbon steel, I'm guessing? Yeah, I guess so. Um Oh, it's got to get this the right way around now. Uh, I sharpen carbon steel on my CBN. There is reportedly, I can't remember what it is, whether you shouldn't or, sh or are okay to do it. I, I don't know. I sharpen uh, carbon steel on mine, no problems. Um, if it clogs up, use a declogging stone um, CBN. That's fairly easy to do, and they're only small and fairly inexpensive. Go on the website to find those. Um, I don't have a problem with it at all. Whether they say, whoever they are, that you should or shouldn't, I don't know. But I've, in my experience, I, I've used it, and it's fine. And then Frederick's just asking you, did you get caught up with all the mayhem with air traffic control? I knew nothing about air traffic control issues until I got home and my mum had phoned me up to say, you got back all right? I said, yeah, why? Um, yeah, so I got in all right. I, my flight turned up. It was delayed by an hour and a half, um, but that that was fine. I got in to Heathrow around about 20 past 11, I think it was, by the end of it. So no, I was good. I think I got out, got away with it with the skin of my teeth. Right, there we are. There's the first one. So nice, just little plain, sanded, polished, um, little little vase shape. Okay, not vase shape, little candle shape. Let's do the other one. So same thing. We're just going to grip on the inside of the OD ones. Just check to make sure it's almost centered. And do the final centering by bringing up the tailstock. Because there's a little center point there already, because we held it between centers to, do, to rough it down. We're just going to make sure it beds into that. And then we'll do the same the same job. Let's this time though, let's let's mix it up a little bit. Let's use instead of using the um, the bowl gouge to finish it, I'll just use the bowl gouge to rough it. We'll then do a combination between the skew and the spindle. Yeah, sorry, yes, Ben. Oh, sorry, Cohen. A um, couple of questions. We've got one. Is the sanding? Sorry, this is from Mark. Is the sanding sealer diluted or full strength? diluted i always dilute mine between 50 to 70 percent um sealer and then the rest in um uh, thinners that's my preference there is a reason because every time i i do that with an earshot of the manufacturers they tell me no you don't need it It can be used straight out of the tin well it might be able to be used straight out of the tin but the fact that when you seal it it soaks further in and it'll dry much quicker then that wins for me every time. I have always thinned my um, cellulose sealer and will always do it for that reason. The other thing, if you've got waxy timbers, oily timbers, the extra thinners in them will cut through that. And, and again, they're, they'll sink into very dense, hard materials much better than if you don't do that. 
and the same thing if you have a punky timber the same thing will happen it'll go right the way in and it'll harden that punky timber up so that's the reasons i do it there we are um so frederick's asking um do you find that if you use steel wool it reacts with the wood and leaves small flecks of metal in the wood yes all the time so especially those timbers with with um, a high concentrated tannin in oak chestnut yew um teak uh, all of those types of timbers you will you will color the timber i've just done um, a couple of demonstrations at swat doing that very thing making uh, wet oak vessels and coloring them with a mixture of wire wool and vinegar and they go completely black so do be aware if you're using wire wool or steel wool as i was corrected whilst <laughs> over there um do be do be aware that that will happen um in fact i used to on holly pots just put a light coating of uh, white vinegar and then get wire wool and sprinkle over the top and that less speckles that look like porcelain so it's really quite a nice way of decorating so yeah i mean just try it for yourself take some take some timber just take a project wire wool and vinegar solution and give it a go see what you come up with it's really interesting and then jonathan ash is asking dilute sanding sealer with what so that dilute sanding sealer if it's cellulose sanding sealer with cellulose thinners all right i think we're good yeah thank you okay good questions everybody so down to a solid There we are. I'll take out, just rough out the bulk. Then we'll go to a spindle gouge. So a spindle gouge is a little bit different than a bowl gouge because there's not as much handle movement, more rotation. So I'm rotating the tool over as opposed to doing all of the handle movement that I would normally do with a bowl gouge. We're going to go back in there with a skew. So tool rest up, tool rest high. Just so I've got a nice crisp line at the bottom of those two convex shapes now we're going to take tailstock out the way we'll take off the bottom and then we'll sand and we'll add a little bit of color just a little bit always double check when you take the the whole point away just make sure that you've got a good firm fixing still remember when to stop expanding I always say this, but we stop just before just before you hear the first crack. Regular viewers will know that. And let's go back in with that bowl gouge again. Bowl gouge or sp uh, spindle gouge, actually. So look, all I'm doing, when I get to that center point, I'm just making sure I'm doing a slightly lighter cut. So if that means, bring the handle back around to you a little bit just to, to ease off toward the end. You can always go back and correct yourself. Another three or four. There we are. So as long as that's clean, then we can sand. Dust extraction is going on. Yes, Ben, question. 
Um, Alan's asking, do you ever use a bowl gouge with a standard grind? What do you call a standard grind, Alan? Because there isn't one. Yeah, <laughs> There's I... so many grinds. If you're talking direct from the shop, so flat with nothing on, no. You know, those corners are too far in the way. That's a blank. That's ready for you to, to sharpen your own shape on. Um, with a very little curve on the end, yes, I will. Um, but over the years of teaching and things, I find bringing those wing back, wings back a lot further means they're less aggressive and less likely to catch. So I, I tend to all, none of my, my tools at home have um, that flat grind at all. Some have a very slight grind on. Bottom feeders, for instance, I tend to put only a very slight grind on. Uh, yeah, so that that's me. Yeah, I mean, roughing gouges are the place for a flat grind, in, in, certainly in my opinion anyway. Sorry, Ben. Um, is there any reason why you couldn't have the tea light in the other end or both ends? No. No, just swap the design around so you got the longer point at the top. Absolutely no. It's up to you. You do what you want. Absolutely no question at all. Um, no, no laws in um, candlestick making. Not that I know. So, again, let's go for same abrasive. So I'm going 100, 150, 240, 400. That was 100, so 150. So I'm using um, what we would refer to in the UK here as joinery grade softwood. It's actually sold as redwood. Don't be confused in thinking that that means giant sequoia. It's not. You can see by the color. This is just joinery grade softwood. You could use um, the building type material as long as, as, long as it's not tantalized. Um, you'd have to make sure your tools are sharp because it's a very quick grown material and the, the annual rings have got quite a distance apart. It's quite soft. But you know, absolutely, you could use that. In the States, the, the lovely hard maple and soft maple will work equally as well. Well, in fact, probably hard maple, 10 times better. But um, anything pale, if you're going to add color. I'm just going to do a very, very simple bit of airbrushing, nothing flamboyant. I don't think these sorts of little mini projects need a huge amount. This may be a little bit of a an addition not on everything just the old one and this is all going to be from transparent um, wood dyes or stains i've actually got in here i've got the chromacraft uh, wood stain There we are. I think that should be enough. I'm going to keep the dust extractor on. There is a split in this one here. Okay, so that's going to be sold for £10 extra because it's unique. Okay, completely different from anything else. Um, so let's... I'll just temporarily turn off the dust extractor, just knowing that I'm going to turn it back on again. So I can hold it there. We'll put dust extractor on, let all that excess dye go away rather than in my lungs. Um, and I've just got a brown, um, a brown, a quite a nice brown here in the in my airbrush. The airbrush I'm using is a, a dual action air, but it's the SP50, uh, SP50, sorry. Um, so you press down for the air and pull back. And um, the more you pull back, the more color you're going to get out. Okay, so nice symbol. Beside me, I've got a little airbrush compressor as well. Yes, Ben. Um, so a uh, good for question from Frederick here. Um, do you ever airbrush acrylic paints? Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a lot of airbrush paints are acrylic paints. Certainly when it comes to my uh, the fishing lures and things like that, they're, they're mainly acrylics. The reason I go for um, transparent colours is because they last so much longer in the airbrushes. I mean, I'm terrible at cleaning the airbrushes out, but they're, they're an easy one. Acrylics, you have to wash out straight away. So when you finish with them, don't leave them overnight because they're dry. Um, but with the, the spirit stains... Um, I don't think I've cleaned these out for about four or five months now, and they'll and this one's still working. I was, we, it's been a little bit warm in here, so I was quite surprised actually, but yeah, they're still working and fine. So it just that cures my laziness. The other thing is they're a little bit more transparent. They'll they well they're a lot more transparent. They'll soak into the timber. You'll see the timber through them. Um, some acrylics aren't quite like that. They're going to be more opaque in their color. You see, so that's the that's my reason behind it. Yes, Ben. So a question from Gnarly Oak. Um, they're asking, uh, well, they're saying they've been taught using a bowl gouger sharp and using the Tormek Jig Setting 2, uh, which is more flat, as Jonathan suggested earlier, uh, but struggle when sharpened to the Setting 4, which we uh, commonly use here with the more swept back um, wings. Yep. Um, any idea why that might be? Uh, more difficult or is that a struggle in sharpening do you know there ben or in using uh, i've been taught using the bowl gouge so i think they're using it uh with the kind of more of a flat um profile a more of a flat profile no i to be honest without seeing your turn and without seeing what your problem is i can't i, I wouldn't know um i don't know why one would be harder than the other if i'm honest if you've got a bevel you've got a, um, a cutting edge as long as that bevel's rubbing and you're pushing in the up the length of the tool, I can't see why there would be a problem, um, unless I knew what the problem was. If you know what I mean. So maybe we can talk further about that. Just send me an email, um, and uh, and you know I'll help from there definitely. But no, not sure. Um, let's just do that little bit of airbrushing then. So compressor on. Got a nice little quick release hose on this one. All I'm going to do is right where. The join is there. You could do it at the top. You could do it at the bottom. I'm going to do it in the center. Just put a nice little band on. Not too close. I'm going to have the lathe running. Dust extractor going. There we are. go back in its block now over the top of that that would come off the lathe i'd wait for the um the stain to dry properly it's pretty much dry most airbrush paint needs to go on what goes on um uh, it'll go on dry so you could then paint over the top of it because the lacquer i would use as an acrylic lacquer i'd probably just wait an hour or so for that to properly cure um and then i can stand it and and do the do the um the acrylic lacquer make sure there's dust free dust doesn't really affect the the stain there all right let's get a top on that we'll get them both up together and ask any answer any more final questions there may be but they're very different they're not supposed to be a pair they're not supposed to be used together um they're designed or they're supposed to have like i say either a pair or the power of three which works nicely now are they Let's pop them up to that camera there. So very different in their finish and completely different sizes, of course. But mix them up, like I said, um, and do whatever you will when in terms of decorating, embellishing, and all that sort of stuff. I quite like that. I think that's quite nice. Once that's lacquered as well, that'll just pop. Um, that color will pop lovely. So here we are. Yes, Ben, last few questions. Let me take my glasses off. Now we've stopped. So I think we've got a few viewers in that um, don't normally get to see the live. Um, so okay. they're, it's really good. They're, um, they're all commenting that it's nice to be part of the live. Nice. Um, where's our question here? Oh, uh, Woodworking Learner saying, uh, what was the color again? What color was that? What color was that? Uh, <laughs> exactly what color? I don't know, but it was a brown. Um, I don't know. It was a, it was a brown. It was a ready brown. 
Okay. And should the um the cliffs asking, should the cup be glued in? Um, on all of the ones I've previously done, I've glued them glued them in with a little bit of epoxy. You find that the tea light holders have a metal shield as well, like a uh, aluminium shield. So you, you're safe to do that. Um, so yeah, no problem. It, it's just you, you know the scenario. The potential scenario is if you pick this candle up for whatever reason to take from one room to the other, you don't want the candle coming out. So yeah, glue them in, uh, glue the cups in, and then they're in there for good. Then okay, they're fairly easy to glue in just just around the surrounding edge. That's that's what I would do anyway. It's entirely up to you, of course. Yeah, and then just lots of um, lots of thanks and uh, good demo and all that. Good, good. Well, look, it's. <laughs> I was going to say it's nice to be back in the cooler temperatures. Where I was in um, in Savannah, um, down in Georgia last week, it was around about 38 to 40. And then we went into Texas to the, I think it peaked at about 46. Um, so it's hot, hot, hot. To, for all those guys that are out there now, I'm in around about 16 to 18 degrees. Um, so it's a lot less than half what we were <laughs> putting up with last week. So phew, I can put some on at last. <laughs> Yes, Sorry. babe, we've got another question. Um, Bill's just asking, um, can you put a colour um, over another colour? You can. With airbrushing, you can. The only th thing you can't do when it comes to airbrushing is now brush a finish on or wipe a finish on because you just take the surface off of that. So uh, especially acrylics, you'll wipe it off literally. So you spray whatever on top. Your colour, you put that one colour on. You don't have to wait for the next one. As long as you don't overspray. If you overspray, you'll find ink goes everywhere. So practice on paper first. Um, <clears throat> and then, yeah, put whatever colour you want beside it. You've done the old colour wheel at school. You know what happens when you mix yellow and blue and so on. You, what colours you get. So, um, yeah, just practice with that. Have fun with it. And, uh, yeah, and spray lacquer over the top afterwards. Must be spray, don't brush. All right. Good. Well, thanks ever so much. Well, we made it. 3, 58, and 52 seconds. We got there just in time. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that one, everybody. Um, I've enjoyed um, doing it for you. A nice, nice, plain and simple one. Next Tuesday, um, something really that most of you guys have been asking for. We get another beginner session. So we've got Steph back in the studio here. We've got some spindle turning to be done. So we're going to get using the roughing gouge, the spindle gouge, the skew chisel. Um, and bowl gouge and, and scrapers. So we're going to have a little bit of fun doing that. Um, but yeah, don't forget, I say it every single time, if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up, share us around and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, everybody, thank you very much. Bye-bye.